All right. For this video, what we're going to do is try and tie all of the AC components together that we've been talking about. We talked about the compressor, talked about the condenser, talked about the expansion device, talked about the evaporator core, receiver dryer, accumulator tank, orifice tube. Um, we're going to try and tie all the components together. The first diagram that I'm going to do is for a TXV system. We'll cover the TXV system and then we'll do another video for our orifice tube system. Let's start with the compressor. Our compressor, as we know, part of the AC system. And theoretically, we can cut the compressor in half, if you will. We've got one side of the compressor is our suction side. The other side of the compressor would be our discharge side. Okay? And we know what we've talked about with the air conditioning compressor, the suction side is going to be our low side pressure, our low side vapor. So we would have low pressure vapor, one portion of the compressor, and the function of the compressor is going to compress the low pressure vapor, raise the pressure and raise the temperature, and naturally we move it to our discharge side of the compressor. Okay. Also, the compressor, we need to be able to move the internal components of the compressor. We have actually a compressor shaft, if you will, this fixed hard through the center of the compressor. Protrudes through the front of the compressor, and on the front of the compressor, another provision for the compressor is where we'd actually mount our clutch coil, our pulley, and our exterior hub. So our clutch coil would be pressed physically on the snout of the compressor. We would have a pulley that would go around or cover, if you will, the clutch coil, and then we would actually have a hub, an exterior hub, that's splined to the compressor shaft. Okay? The clutch coil naturally has to be turned on electrically. So we would have two wires. We'd have a ground wire and we have our power wire, okay? And the ground typically is gonna be uh, chassis ground or block ground somewhere underneath the hood of the vehicle. Our power supply to the compressor can come from multiple locations, can come from a uh, body control module, could come from a PCM, also from an electronic climate control module that typically controls the function of a relay, and a relay would su supply the 12 volt power to the compressor. When we supply ground and power to the clutch coil, it creates a magnetic field and it forces this hub to lock in solid against the pulley. When the hub is locked in solid against the pulley, it's a belt driven pulley, it forces the compressor shaft internally to start moving. When it starts rotating, it starts moving, it goes through our compressor function where it's sucking and it's compressing the refrigerant raising our low pressure vapor and temperature to a high pressure vapor and high pressure temperature, okay? The refrigerant, when it leaves the compressor, it's gonna go to our condenser. A little off on the drawing there, but everybody gets my drift here, okay? All right, so we've got the a uh, high pressure line that would leave the condenser, or excuse me, leave the compressor, going to the condenser, okay? So in this high pressure line, we have high pressure gas, or high pressure vapor. So, entering the top portion of the condenser is our high pressure gas that also is carrying our temperature. Again, we've raised the pressure and the temperature in the compressor, 
from our suction side of our system, we get in the evaporator in a few minutes, to our high pressure gas and our high pressure temperature. So moving through the upper portion of the condenser, our refrigerant is in high pressure vapor or gas state. Okay? Now, what we want to happen here is behind the condenser or depending on the application, possibly in front of the condenser, we need an electric fan or possibly if it's a rear wheel drive vehicle, we'll have a belt driven fan clutch. Okay? So we're drawing airflow across the condenser. As we draw airflow in across the condenser, with the temperature now greater than what ambient is. For example, if my high side temperature now is 165 degrees Fahrenheit, my ambient temperature is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, I have my opportunity for my heat exchange. Hot moves to cold. Okay? So what happens is now the heat that was picked up inside the passenger compartment that's moved through the compressor is now going to be released from the gas where the refrigerant starts changing states. So now the refrigerant is releasing the heat that's suspended in the gas, allowing the gas to change back to a liquid. So now lower portion, if you will, in the condenser are high pressure liquid. So, exiting the condenser, that high side liquid line has high pressure liquid. And again, we're talking about a TXV system where we'll have either an L-type expansion valve or we'll have an expansion block. So with the TXV system, the L-type valve or the block type system, we're going to run a receiver dryer. So we will draw a receiver dryer. In the function of the receiver dryer, there's a tube inside the receiver dryer that will allow only high pressure liquid to exit the receiver dryer. So the receiver dryer, lower portion of the receiver dryer, high pressure liquid, upper portion of the receiver dryer will have some high pressure gas. Again, the receiver dryer is cylindrical, cylinder of Freon, if you will. Lower portion of the cylinder is going to be our liquid. Upper portion is going to be our vapor. Exiting the receiver dryer, going now to our TXV. Okay? So, Receiver dryer, exiting the receiver dryer again is going to be high pressure liquid. Going up to the TXV valve. Now remember the purpose and function of the TXV valve? Stops or slows, if you will, slows the refrigerant down, forces it to change states as it moves through the TXV valve. It's slowing the high pressure liquid down to a low pressure liquid entering the evaporator core. So next we would have our evap core. So moving through the thermal expansion valve, if it's doing its job, it's working properly, it's going to force this high pressure liquid to slow down low pressure liquid moving into the evaporator core.
as the blower motor is working inside the automobile, it's drawing the heat from the passenger compartment through the evaporator core. As it draws the heat from the passenger compartment through the evaporator core across the low pressure liquid, the low pressure liquid absorbs the heat, begins to boil, changes states. Now the upper portion of the evaporator core low pressure vapor. So now, functioning evaporator core, thermal expansion valve has done its job. We've got low pressure liquid in the lower portion of the evaporator core. Blower motor has drawn the heat from the passenger compartment across the low pressure liquid in the evaporator core. It's absorbed the heat from the passenger compartment. It's boiled, it's changed states to a vapor at the top of the evaporator core. The heat is now suspended in that gaseous state, leaving the evaporator core going to suction side of the compressor. So this suction line is going to be our low pressure gas, our low pressure vapor. going to the compressor, okay? Some other things that I want to mention and talk about, let's go back to the receiver dryer for just a second. Inside the receiver dryer, remember when we talked about our receiver dryers, we have what we call a desiccant cartridge or a desiccant bag inside the dryer to help filter contaminants in the system, absorbs moisture, also, top of the receiver dryer, a lot of our receiver dryers will have a sight glass. You can actually monitor the flow of the refrigerant through the receiver dryer looking into the sight glass. Okay? The one thing that I want to mention, I mentioned flow and that's key. When we talk about the receiver dryers, I mentioned the arrow on top of the dryer. Our receiver dryers are directional to flow of the refrigerant. If we look at our cycle, if we start from the evaporator core, we have the refrigerant moving in this direction, if you will, to and through the compressor, leaving the compressor, to and through the condenser, leaving the condenser, heading toward the receiver dryer, okay? A couple of things I want you to remember. I've talked to you about remembering the terminology for our designations for our refrigerant. We have low pressure. Is it low pressure vapor? Is it low pressure gas? Do I have high pressure? Is it high pressure gas? Is it high pressure vapor? If we're referring to the liquid line between the receiver dryer and the TXV, that would be HP liquid. The high side line between the compressor and the condenser. That is still high pressure. The difference is it's high pressure gas. suction line between the evaporator core and the compressor. Low pressure, vapor. The liquid refrigerant in the evaporator core, we have low pressure liquid, we also have low pressure gas or low pressure vapor. Okay. Another thing I want to mention and talk about briefly before we pause and go to the next video, talk about pressure switches. Any place on the high side of the system that I can mount or install a pressure switch would shut the compressor operation off if 
the pressure exceeds what the rating on the pressure switch is. Okay? We need to be able to control compressor operation on the low side of the system. What we typically see on a TXV type system, if it is an L type valve, we will have a capillary tube. And remember, we talked about our capillary tube. The capillary tube would come off of the TXV valve and it would clamp to my suction line leaving the evaporator core. Okay? Inside the capillary tube, the capillary tube in the sensing bulb is charged with refrigerant. So it would be charged with refrigerant as the bulb heats. It's going to cause the refrigerant to boil. As the refrigerant boils, it's now moving back in this direction toward my TXV valve. And remember, the top of our TXV valve and the explanation that we had in the illustrations we've looked at, in the top of the valve we have a bell with a diaphragm, our capillary tube with the sensing bulb, and it actually has a valve as the pressure moves through and on top of the diaphragm and the valve, it can push this panel in or out, allowing more or less refrigerant to move into the evaporator core. Okay? Next video, we'll diagram and talk about an orifice tube system. Thank you.